Food production today faces many challenges in meeting the needs of the world's growing population. One major problem faced is the emergence of plant viruses which can wipe out entire crop plantations. Thus, we turn to an uncommon plant protection technique known as cross protection. Picture a plant that, under normal circumstances, would die shortly after infection by a severe virus strain. Cross protection is a phenomenon in which a plant infected first with mild virus strain is protected from the effects of a subsequent infection by a severe related virus strain. Two tumoral viruses were used in our experiments. Hibiscus latent Singapore virus or HRSV was used as a mild virus strain, while tobacco mosaic virus or TMV was used as a severe virus strain. HRSV is a new virus recently discovered and TMV is a well-known plant virus that causes severe mosaic symptoms and necrosis. In our experiment, we analyzed the expression levels of three defense-related genes, namely WRKY7, WRKY8, and ACC oxidase. WRKY7 is a negative regulator which indirectly represses plant defense genes such as pathogenesis-related genes and those which enhance salicylic acid production. Salicylic acid is a plant hormone which enhances plant defense. WRKY8 is a positive regulator which enhances the expression of downstream defense genes such as those which code for NADP malic enzyme. This enzyme is a catalyst involved in any DPH production required for defense-related lignification. ACC oxidase is a positive regulator which enhances the production of ethylene. Ethylene is a plant hormone which enhances resistance against pathogens. This means that in plants with more severe pathogen infection will have higher transcriptional levels for all three genes. Thus, we hypothesized that the relative expression levels of all three genes will be lower in cross-protected plants than unprotected plants. Next, we move on to the methodology. This is the time of our project. Nicotiana bentomena plants were used in our experiments. We sowed seeds and grew the plants in the plant growth room over 3 weeks. 48 plants were then chosen and split into 4 equal batches. Then, we proceeded with virus inoculation. We do not the day of the first inoculation as 0 days post-inoculation, or DPI. We inoculated 1 batch with inoculation buffer, which we refer to as smoke virus, and 2 batches with HRSV. The last batch of plants was left untouched. On 12 DPI, we inoculated TMV on one batch pre-inoculated with HRSV and on the batch left untouched on 0 DPI. In summary, we obtained 4 different batches of plants, mock virus inoculated plants as our negative control, HRSV inoculated plants, cross protected plants inoculated with both HRSV and TMV, as well as TMV inoculated plants. We then proceeded to extract total RNA from mock and HRSV inoculated plants on these days, as well as the cross protected and unprotected plants on these days. We then make use of reverse transcription real-time PCR to quantify the amount of viral RNA in the plants and determine the relative expression of three genes. This is our phenotypic results taken on 20 dpi. More viral symptoms such as a wrinkle and uneven leaf ages can be observed on the HRSV infected and cross-protected plants. Severe necrosis and lesions were observed on TMV infected plants. Thus, the cross-protected plants clearly exhibited symptoms similar to the HRSV plants instead of the TMV plants. From real-time PCR, we obtained CT values, and using this equation, we obtained the gene expression levels of the three genes relative to the constitutively expressed actin gene. The data shown in the three graphs reflect the differences in the transcriptional levels of the three genes between cross-protected H plus T plants and unprotected TMV plants. The transcriptional levels for MOC and HRV plants are negligible and thus not shown in the graphs. The expression of these upregulated genes in response to pathogen infection is very much lower in the protected plants than unprotected TMV plants. Since a higher level of transcription reflects a more severe pathogen infection, the unprotected plants might have experienced a much more severe pathogen infection as compared to cross-protected plants. There was a significant increase in gene expression levels on 17 dpi in unprotected TMV plants. Why didn't this occur on 15 dpi? This is because TMV inoculation occurred on 12 dpi and hence it is still in the latent period of infection on 15 dpi. This exponential increase on 17 dpi indicated the effects of pathogen infection. The gene expression levels in cross-protected plants, however, remain low and constant, exhibiting effects of cross-protection. The decline in gene expression levels on 20 dpi was due to stabilization of gene expression levels after peaking at around 17 dpi. As positive regulators are expressed more actively in the early stages of infection, while negative regulators are expressed more actively in the later stages, the decline in the WRQI8 is much greater than that of the WRQI7. This graph shows the TMV code protein RNA levels in the cross-protected and unprotected plants. There is a significantly lower amount of TMV RNA in protected plants than TMV plants, which means that TMV replication is repressed on protected plants. From our results, we can validate the effectiveness of cross-protection against severe strains of plant viruses and can be used more widely to maintain a more sustainable agriculture for the future. For future research, we hope to look into the application of cross-protection to ease the tedious process of virus inoculation onto crops and to prevent spreading of protecting virus strains to adjacent crops. 
We also hope to investigate the mechanisms of cross-production to employ a better regulated variation of cross-production that could protect plants from the deleterious effects of viruses, even the mouse gene viruses.